Hey guys, Janet here, aka Game On Assist, and today we are talking about my favorite things from winter 2019. So this is going to be an ongoing series that I'm starting here on the channel. I originally did it back when I did my old channel with my friend Jess called Bear Bit. I asked her back when we ended that channel if I could relaunch it on here. She said yes, but then I just never got around to launching it. But now it's a new calendar year. I feel like I can start fresh and do this. So what this series will be is it'll happen quarterly and I'll look back on the season and see what kind of things I was into, whether it's peripherals, whether it's specific games, anything that's kind of gaming related. I might throw in a couple of general nerdy things, but mo pretty much all of it's gonna be games. So that's what the series is. Let's jump into it. This is for winter 2019, as I just mentioned. Now, if you are like me and you live in a cold place, you know that winter actually kind of lasts until like March or April. But for the sake of kind of how the calendar is set up, we're just gonna pretend that February is the end of winter and maybe it will be. That would be really, really nice. So for winter 2019, I was really into using my Elgato. I just finally got an Elgato. I got it for um, Christmas. So I got the HD 60S one. Um, I actually have the box that it came in. So here's how it looks if you guys haven't seen it before. There's a couple different types of Elgato capture cards. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar now i'm really really new to streaming that's something that i've just decided that i really want to commit to this year and i've i'm starting off with it it's it's been an imperfect start but i have done probably like at least four streams in january um and i'm looking to have another total of four more this month so far so good um right so there's different types you guys can look online if you're interested in getting a capture card. They explain what the differences are between them, but pretty much this one will allow me to stream and record at the highest settings across all of my consoles. And what I like about this one is it's an external capture card. You can also do an internal one. There isn't really like that much of a difference in terms of what it's capable of. Just the internal one actually goes inside the PC. It does explain like where all the cords go. It gives you an HDMI already with it. You have another one that goes out and you basically just have like a few HDMIs and then you plug it into the, the PC or the monitor depending on your setup and then you can stream. Um, I normally have streams so far just off my Switch which was the one that is kind of the more complicated one to stream from compared to the other consoles because it's newer and it's Nintendo and Nintendo is weird. But I've been really happy with this. This is what most people I know stream with. Usually they're using some type of Elgato, so that's why I went with this one. And um, once again, this is what it actually looks like. So it's pretty, you know, it's small, it's convenient. It is somewhat easy to use. I feel like there is a lot of uh, materials out there on YouTube and stuff. So like I learned a lot of my stuff as far as what my OBS settings need to be and all of that from just YouTube videos and then a few other like Twitch streamers and YouTubers helped me out and told me how to fix some of the issues I was having uh, after I tweeted out some issues um, on Twitter and a few people DM'd me and stuff which was awesome. So I've been really happy with this and it's been great to be able to stream off of Switch because Switch is my favorite console of the modern gen like I'm a big Nintendo fan and I've always just kind of been like, oh, if I could just stream off my Switch, it would be so much easier to stream. And that's not entirely true, but I have had some fun with it. I streamed Splatoon 2 during the um, Waffles versus Pancake Splatfest. I streamed, um, I feel like some other stuff off of the Switch, but my most successful stream was with Splatoon 2, because I think the other ones kind of had some like frame rate issues, because I didn't really have my settings optimally set. Um, so this has been really cool and something I've been getting really into um, in 2019 and during the winter season. Something else that I have gotten into, I haven't like fully, fully dug in because I've been pretty busy, but I finally got Game Pass, Xbox Game Pass. I got that because they have, I don't know if it's always this deal, but like the first month is $1. And I was like, I have a dollar and I'm like, I'll just cancel it before the month is up. But I didn't cancel it because I actually really like it. I think it's just, it's awesome. I mean, honestly, I just really recommend looking at the library. If there are any games you wanna play, like just get Xbox Game Pass. You can enjoy all the games on there that you're into, whether it's three or four games, whether it's 10 or 20 games. For me, things that I remember I was really into off Game Pass. Abzu, I started playing Abzu. It's a really short game. I just only played it though for like an hour or so, so I just need to go back to it. 
I played a little bit of Banjo-Kazooie just because I need to capture some gameplay footage for a Patreon video I did. That looks beautiful, controls really well. I installed some of the Hitman games and my brother was playing some of those and I, I put a couple of other titles on there too. I think, um, I want to say um, Hellblade is on there, but I'm not positive. I think that's on there. So really, if there's even one game you're interested in, I think it's worth downloading the service and just like focusing and trying to knock out that game. But they also add games like really steadily. And you don't need Xbox Live to actually get Game Pass, um, which is already like known information, but I kind of forgot about that. And um, my Xbox Live had expired, which I noticed recently when I tried to play something else. But anyway, so I just thought it was kind of cool that you can like use the this like kind of online library of games without necessarily having like every facet of what Microsoft offers. So that's something I've been really into. Other things that kind of highlighted my winter time, Resident Evil 2, obviously you guys saw, I just put up that video with Radical Reggie talking about Resident Evil 2. Um, I wrote an article on this, but something that was really surprising to me was the fact that oh, I played it on PS4. Normally I'm an Xbox person because I like the Xbox controller more, but the DualShock 4 when it came to Resident Evil 2 made the game so much better. Like I was really, really shocked because normally the little gimmicks that are in the DualShock 4, like, you know, it has like gyroscopic controls to a degree, which are almost always like terribly used. Sometimes it wants to use a touchpad for like really random stuff. It kind of always feels like an an unpleasant surprise when they're like, oh, you got to use the touchpad. Stuff like that. The lighting up thing is cool, but whatever. You know, I just never was really into the offerings of what the DualShock 4 had. But in Resident Evil 2, like, it's just so great. Like, it adds to the immersion so much. They have, like, the speaker, the internal speaker on the controller. Like, you hear the key turn in that speaker. I think that's really great. You also hear, like, the crumbling of paper when you grab a map. Um, this lights up in relation to your health um, in the game. And then the touchpad can be used to pull up the map, which can also be used as like a janky like pause type deal, uh, which is really easy to hit because it's so like large. Um, so even in like, you know, you just need a quick second, you can just tap it really fast and it's super simple. So I really, really loved it. I was surprised how into playing on PS4 I was because like I said, I normally default everything to Xbox. I just like the Xbox controller more than the PS4 one, but for Resident Evil 2, yeah, play that thing on PS4 because it is a lot more enjoyable than I think I would have had if I played it on the Xbox. On that note, I, yeah, I got really into Resident Evil 2 because I was um, playing pretty much nothing but that for like the first week or so of the of like February. Like as soon as it came out, I, I got it and then I played a bunch of it and I did second run and I did a little bit of... Um, hunk mode and while I was playing I busted out my old Resident Evil necklace that I got from Gamer Girl Monthly a while ago. I can try to show you guys that. So I think they might still sell this. If they do I'll put a link in the description. I got this last year and I wore it when I played or maybe two years ago. I wore it when I played Resident Evil 7 uh, which was my first Resident Evil game but I got really into it again with playing Resident Evil 2 and since this is a much more traditional Resident Evil game because obviously it's like the second game in the franchise. Umbrella plays a lot more of a, like, in-your-face role than in 7. Like, I think they are present in 7 to some capacity, but I, like, didn't really understand, like, like, what was up with that. But in Resident Evil 2, it's a lot more of, like, like, you know, you spend time in, like, the laboratory and stuff of Umbrella, and it's just a lot more, like, in-your-face to me. Maybe I'm just misremembering 7. I don't know. But I got more into the whole Umbrella Corp thing from playing Resident Evil 2. Something that just, just came out that has already dominated my life completely is, of course, um, Tetris 99. So Tetris 99 is Nintendo's exclusive Tetris Battle Royale game, essentially. Uh, it was announced during their last Direct, which happened like literally like a few days ago. And it's amazing. I love it. I also wrote an article on this because I was super into it. There's a lot of like ways that you can dig deeper into the game, which kind of, you know, is reminiscent of a lot of these Battle Royale games where they're like accessible on the surface, like anyone can start playing because the concept is very straightforward. But then if you want to get good, you really kind of got to dig into the meta of the game. Now, I haven't actually like dug into too much on how it works there are like some crazy reddit posts and youtube videos that go into like 
you know, how the badges affect, like, your line clears and what it really takes to win and how, like, T-spins are super important. But, like, that's kind of more than I'm currently willing to do. I might get into the more nerdy stuff because, one, people are starting to learn and they're getting better and I'm going to, like, the gap between me and everyone else is going to get bigger. And, two, I really want to win at least one match. I'm not going to be satisfied with this game until I win at least one. Now, I've gotten really close. I got... Um, second place like last night and I was like so close and then before that I got um, third not too long ago and then before that was like six is my other highest place so those are my top three rankings that I've gotten in Tetris 99 but it's so addictive like I've played I think already like three and a half or maybe like pushing four hours of it like literally I'll play a game and then I just want to keep playing it over and over again it's probably my favorite thing of the season I think which is kind of weird because it's such an old, like, game conceptually, but Tetris just keeps reinventing itself, and it's such an impressive game for that reason. Like, Tetris can be, like, given to you so many different ways, and it's amazing each time and fresh each time, and it's just super, super impressive. Something else that I wouldn't say I was, like, really into this this season, but it's something that was kind of funny that I thought I'd share with you guys um, that really helped me out. So it's winter time, and... Uh, For those of you who don't know, I am a long-distance runner. That is my favorite way to work out. I love running. And um, I'm also training for the Chicago Marathon. I will be running this fall, uh, fall 2019. So I've been already training for that, really trying to get in shape, get my mileage up, et cetera, et cetera. So it's been really important to run often, consistently. And it's really cold outside. And I like running outside, especially since I run so far, like... Running that on a treadmill would really suck, but the weather has been so terrible here in Chicago. Um, you know, we had the polar vortex and everything that I got a, um, a little gym membership at like the Park District gym by my house just so that I would have access to a treadmill. It's like it's like seventeen dollars a month or something. So like basically, I paid seventeen bucks to have access to a treadmill in case the weather ever got super bad. But like it was bad for so long that I had to do a long run on the treadmill. So I was on the treadmill for seven miles, which was like for me, that's like, you know, about like an hour and 10 minutes, plus or minus, depending on how quickly I'm going. And like you just I mean, you just get bored on there really easily. Like I do at least maybe some people can just be on there forever. But I just find it like all the fun that I get from running is just gone when I'm on the treadmill. So um, but I wanted I use Nike Run Club when I run. Anyway, I have my phone on me. It needs to be on you to some capacity, which means I can't like use it to watch videos or anything. And I feel like listening to just like music or a podcast wasn't going to do it for me. So I actually busted out my PSP this winter specifically to watch a movie. And the only UMD movie I have left is the one. This is the original one I had as a kid is Hitch on UMD. So I watched a good, you know, an, like 70 minutes of Hitch on the treadmill uh, at my local gym, and that was pretty weird. Now, this is a movie, it's a rom-com with Will Smith. Um, and you know what, to be honest, it's very decent. But I watched it, like, a kajillion times as a kid because it's the only movie I had. And uh, one time I remember I stayed at my grandma's house and she didn't have, like, like, there wasn't a TV in the room I stayed at, and I was the only, like, it was just me and her, and it was kind of that age where I was too old to, like, enjoy, like, really childish stuff, but also, like, you know, there weren't, like, phones, and so I just had no way to entertain myself. I was very bored, so I just watched this movie over and over again, and I watched it again this month, um, and I'm like, yeah, this is, this is a very solid film, <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, I wouldn't, I'm not sure if that really counts as a favorite, but it is something that, like, really stuck out in, um... When I think of winter 2019, I think of terrible weather and having to watch Hitch on the treadmill on my PSP. So I just kept it up there on the treadmill, like propped up. Um, Maybe I could have had like YouTube or something with like my Switch, but I'm not sure what the Wi-Fi situation was. So that's basically why I brought out the PSP. Something else I've been really into, and I know maybe this is kind of controversial, Epic Game Store. Now I know, like I said, it's been kind of like, I don't really want to comment right now on what I think it means to the PC market or whether it's good for gamers or or developers or publishers. I think it's a very complicated issue. But what I will say 
because you guys know um, I love a bargain, is they give you like free games sometimes. So like that's why I downloaded it. Um, Epic Game Store. Yeah, they I don't know exactly how often they're gonna be rolling out free games, but they gave out copies of What Remains of Edith Finch during the month of January, or at least for like two weeks of January. And that was the first game I streamed this year and I played the whole game on stream. I'll link that stuff in the description. And it was one of the best games I've ever played in my life. Like, it was so phenomenal. Um, it's a walking sim, and you play as um, this girl who's returning home, and she's, like, journaling about kind of uncovering the secrets of her family. And it's this home where, like, it was essentially abandoned by her family. And she discusses, like, this kind of family curse that exists where everyone kind of dies young or in tragic ways. And when all these deaths started happening, her mom had, like, boarded up all these rooms, like, all these people's rooms. So you kind of end up breaking into those rooms and reminiscing on who these people were and how they died. And while reminiscing on that, you as the player, like, go into the past and you end up playing as those characters that had died. So visually, you're experiencing, like, a whole different mess of things. Uh, like, at one point, you are a baby playing with toys in a bathtub at one point you like transform into a cat like it's so bananas and and beautiful and moving and emotional like and it's only a few hours long it's just an amazing game and I got that for free on Epic Game Store so I'm enjoying my time on Epic Game Store I don't know sorry to people who are maybe feeling some type of way about Epic Game Store but that has been cool on the same note don't forget that if you're on Amazon Prime user you get free stuff through twitch sometimes like i downloaded hyper light drifter for free so like make sure you're taking advantage of like free stuff that becomes available because um that's you know free stuff is cool and then you can play more games and talk about them and you know maybe get i know i didn't like you know give my money to what remains of edith finch but hopefully me talking about it and sharing about it gets more people to play it and buy it and support the developer and the publisher and a partner interactive which is like my new favorite publisher so, yeah, that was one of, like, the hallmark moments of winter 2019. Um, other things that I've been into, I have, this is not really, like, a new thing I have, but it's a new thing I'm doing. I have these mugs, these, like, gaming mugs that you guys may have seen before on the channel. I think I've drank out of this one before, the Donkey Kong one. I also have this really, really cute Wind Waker one. It's, like, one of my favorite um, mugs of all the mugs I own. And I didn't really drink out of it at all for a really long time because both of these mugs are not dishwasher safe. There's also stuff on the inside, which is cool. And I felt like in order to avoid them ever going in the dishwasher, I would have to keep them in my room and then bring them to the kitchen, wash them immediately, bring them back to my room because even if I tell everyone I live with, hey, don't put this in the dishwasher, don't let this soak in the sink, like people aren't gonna remember that someone's gonna forget at some point so I didn't use these like for the longest time but then I realized you know what this is a waste these are just sitting on my bookshelf I want to be able to drink out of these so I've now put both of these in the dishwasher a lot and so far nothing's happened to them I think this one maybe is becoming a little bit more faded it might just be my imagination I don't know but I'm enjoying um this a lot more now that I'm actually using these mugs to drink coffee out of I actually have coffee in this one right now and these have made me really happy like these honestly brighten up my day I love coffee I drink in case it's not clear I drink like literally in terms of measured cups like four to most most days eight cups a day <laughs> which sounds probably really scary and you're like Ugh. and the very last thing I want to mention this isn't um this is my only non-game thing like I said I'm gonna make most of these just video games but I thought it'd be cool to do um something else that's kind of nerdy as well and branch out for like a hot second. It was my birthday not too long ago. My birthday is January 10th and I've been wanting this for a very long time. So I finally decided to just buy it for myself and it's one of those adult maze books. Now, this is like super random interest of mine, but I love mazes. Like when I was a kid, my dad had this really big black and white maze book with these really complex mazes that were like, everything was really tiny and it always went over like multiple pages and you ha used to have to actually fold over the page to be able to like see the lines properly. And I remember spending a long time in the basement as a kid just working through that maze book. Um, and I had a lot of fun with it. And you know, maybe that's actually where my love of puzzle games stems from, even though I didn't really discover puzzle games until 
until I was much older. This is something that I really enjoy and I've done a couple of them so far. Um, this one I just randomly found on Amazon and it seemed cool like it's all kind of architecture inspired and I like architecture a lot so I went with this this book. It's just one of the first ones that popped up. So far they haven't been too difficult. Here are like some of the ones I've done so far. So they've been a little bit too on the easy end, but there are they do seem like to be ramping up in difficulty. So like some of the more recent ones I've done have been a little bit more complicated. Um, I think this one was particularly challenging, if I remember correctly. This one with all the slopes, um, because some of these, like, it's hard to tell when it's... Um, above and under and stuff it's kind of a lot to keep track of so i like doing these a lot and i'm really looking for more things to do that are not screen based because so many things i, I like are screens like obviously video games when i'm video editing when i'm writing like those are all screen things so as much as i can i'm trying to find and foster hobbies that don't involve looking at screens i think that's one really nice thing about being a distance runner and just I'm like I'm just gonna go out for like an hour and just run that's just an, a little nerdy thing that I've been into if you guys are into mazes and have recommendations on books for that let me know because you know I'm sure I'll finish this in not too long of a time and I'd like to have more of these kind of ready to go um, and those are my favorite things of winter 2019 hopefully the winter time will end very soon because uh, it's been really unpleasant actually um but those are things i've been into let me know in the comments below what stuff you guys have been into so far during january february or even just you know december november as well um what has this winter season looked like for you let me know in the comments and as usual be sure to give this video a thumbs up hit subscribe tap the bell and i will see you guys here next time bye